Hello all, thank you very much for coming. Civilization, technology, progress, space. What do all of these have in common? These concepts are all radically different from one another, and yet inevitably intertwined as time goes by. Of course, the technology developed from our advances in space exploration will progress our society, but they will also affect our modern civilization in ways that no one can perfectly understand. Today, I will be discussing how space exploration and the technologies that come from it are fundamentally tied to the progress of our society. Generally, civilizations with a capacity for space exploration, a capacity, we must remember, we reached just 60 years ago, are classified into three categories of development based on how much energy th they consume. These are known as type one, type two, and type three civilizations. Now, today, we live in what physicist Michio Kaku describes as a type 0 0.7 civilization. Although our energy capacity at 15 terawatts is limited by our consumption of fossil fuels. Society today has progressed to a point unimagined only 20 years ago as we transition from dominating our planet to dominating our solar system to perhaps one day expanding across the galaxy. This is a figure of how much energy we consume today, which is 15 followed by 13 zeros in watts, which is a unit of measurement. If we transition to solar energy, we could do so much more, and more on that later. For now, we must focus on current advances in space technology. For example, in 1957, after the launch of the Sputnik satellite by the Soviet Union, scientists at MIT realized that the radio signals coming from a satellite orbiting our planet could be used to pinpoint the location of anyone or anything on the Earth's surface at the same time. And this is an idea related to a scientific concept known as the Doppler effect, which is the change in perceived frequency depending on the relative velocity of the source or the observer of the sound. Now, it was with this development of an application of the Doppler effect with which a vital aspect of modern society came to be. Can everyone present please take out their phones? Yeah, I'm serious. Please, please take out your phones. I'm assuming most of you prefer iPhone, uh, the Apple brand of phones. I myself prefer Samsung. But it doesn't really matter. You can put them away now. It doesn't really matter because all of these devices are great examples of GPS. Now, GPS, or Global Positioning System, is a vast network of 31 satellites orbiting the Earth that, because of their communications with one another, can figure out the location of any connected device on the network. GPS helps us navigate our personal world. Let's say, for example, I need to get home after this long and exhausting TED talk. By the way, I love doing this. Uh, so I call up Uber. And after agreeing to pay their extortionate prices, I then tell them to take me home. And by plugging in my address into GPS, the route and location is instantly calculated. And that blows my mind. But on a global scale, GPS does so much more. Today, modern passenger jets use GPS to arrive to their destinations safely. Natural disasters have been spotted and prevented for using GPS satellite imagery. And GPS is just the tip of the iceberg of what space technology can do for us in the modern age. Advances in robotics and artificial intelligence has led to vast leaps in progress, both technological and social, on the, on the Earth. Medical scanners developed for use on the International Space Station that had to be portable in order to deal with injured astronauts have developed and expanded to underdeveloped regions around the world to directly benefit the lives of thousands of people in desperate need of medical help. And these are only a small piece of the pie that shows us the better standard of living and the better understanding of the world around us that comes with exploring outer space. Now, 
The next great milestone of development is estimated to occur within a century, 100 years, to mark our transition into a type one civilization. Now, according to the civilization types proposed by Soviet astrophysicist Nikolai Kardashev, a type one civilization would have access to all of the energy hitting its planet's surface. Let's give you some context. If we take our current energy production today, 15 terawatts, multiply it by 2,600, we then get this. And this figure would show how much energy we have in the future. Now, as my good friend ba Bella Ba said, that energy is the shackles for human progress. And this huge increase in energy would correspond to gigantic leaps in technological progress, including, of course, space technology. For example, the cost for transporting material into space today is ridiculous. It costs NASA 27 thousand US dollars to transport one kilogram or about a school textbook into space. That's crazy. Although private space companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have reduced the price tag to just $7,000 per kilogram, the cost is absurd and it is not sustainable. However, there is a way to get the cost even further down to an actual affordable $100 per kilogram. But it involves building a gigantic cable going from the Earth up into space that would have to transport all of this material. It sounds crazy, right? Well, it's actually an idea being developed around the world. The concept for this space elevator is that the cable would allow for the transport of material to and from outer space. But the space elevator would need a material, something, anything, that is both strong, tough, and durable enough to withstand the strain of transporting thousands of tons of material to and from outer space. And no material we possess today is practical enough to solve this engineering problem, unless we improve our technology further. One of those ideas that we're always aware of, always talking about, but are never quite aware of its significance is nanotechnology. Nanotechnology, or nanotech as some people call it, some people being me, uh, is according to author Richard Watson, quote, the art and science of manipulating matter at an atomic or subatomic scale. Let me give you some context. If we imagine a nanometer, which is a very tiny, 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 tiny unit of measurement, were expanded to the width of about this remote picture here, then one meter, which is around this much, when correspondingly expanded, would encompass the diameter of the entire Earth. When we compare a tiny control remote to the Earth, you know we're talking small. Nanotechnology would be composed of devices that would manipulate matter at this scale or even smaller to be able to do almost literally anything. For example, let's say you wake up one morning and you just hate the color of your car. Who needs a red Maserati anyways? Am I right, guys? No one wants that. At the touch of a button, you would be able to change the color of your car, thanks to nanotechnology. And that's not all. Because nanotechnology would allow us to make literally any material that we want, including a carbon nanotube-based material, stronger than diamond, tougher than steel, that would be able to be used to construct something like the space elevator. And the construction of the space elevator, if it were ever to happen, would lead to an explosion of the scientific and economic exploration of outer space, as we would be able to truly access our neighborhood. And it would take mankind to even further heights of prosperity as other uses of nanotechnology, such as medical, that would be used to eradicate cancer, destroy all disease, come into being. And this would all stem from our desire to explore outer space. Speaking of outer space, in 100 years, our ability to travel through space will have improved exponentially. With the huge energy potentially available to us in the future, 
Space travel will have become much less expensive. Right now, there is a spacecraft engine in development called the EM drive, pictured here, that could theoretically reach Mars in 10 weeks. Now, some skeptics say the EM drive can't work because it violates one of the most fundamental laws of physics, which is the law of the conservation of linear momentum. But some say that the engine is running on a hidden fold in space. OK, that doesn't sound crazy at all, right? The problem is, regardless of whether it should or shouldn't work, it does. And we must be able to embrace technology, no matter how crazy it is, if it gives us an advantage, with responsibility, of course. If the EM drive were proven to be functional and developed to its fullest potential, it would replace systems that take seven months and a huge amount of planning to reach Mars. And if the EM drive were proven to be functional and proven uh, to be a viable option, the way our society would interact with outer space would change radically because we would be able to access it at any time very easily. If in 10 years this engine could reach Mars in 10 weeks, imagine how fast it could travel in 100 years. One of the biggest consequences, obviously, of the travel time would be space tourism. People like you or me could go out on the weekend and explore the solar system. Hey, you guys want to check out the rings of Saturn? How about we take a selfie with the sun? It doesn't matter. Because the way our society would interact with outer space would change at a fundamental, individual, and global level. Because at the global level, guys, we would be able to do almost anything. We could land on Pluto. We could explore the moons of Jupiter for exotic life within their vast ocean. We could build colonies on Mars. And we could take our current understanding of the universe to unimagined heights. Ladies and gentlemen, it is completely possible that the technology that will make us the conquerors of space is sitting in a lab on Earth right now. Before I conclude, I must warn you all that the ideas that I have discussed today are just the tiniest tip of our potential for creativity. Technology develops in strange ways. And in the future, the technology we will have is likely radically different from anything that we can imagine today. Although I have the strong feeling that most of the ideas that we have discussed today are going to happen in some form or another. Some may say that technologies can be abused and used for negative ends. And I say to them, so long as we take responsibility for our actions, so long as we watch ourselves and ensure that our sense of wonder at something does not allow us to fall into temptation, the path to the future is clear. So I say to all of you here today, all of those watching and listening to this, go forth. Create miracles. Conquer your limits. And above all else, cooperate for the future. Thank you.